We remember today James Hannington, Bishop of Eastern Equatorial Africa, and martyr in Uganda. James Hannington was born in 1847 of a Congregationalist family, but he became an Anglican before going up to Oxford. He was ordained and after serving a curacy for five years, went with the Church Missionary Society to Uganda. He was consecrated bishop for that part of Africa in 1884, and a year later began a safari inland from Mombasa, together with other European and indigenous Christians. The ruler of the Buganda, Mwanga, who despised Christians because they refused to condone his moral turpitude, seized the whole party, tortured them for several days, and then had them butchered to death on this day in 1885. Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Of these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Mighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. God, who strengthened your church by the steadfast courage of your martyr, James Hannington. Grant that we also, thankfully remembering his victory of faith, may overcome what is evil and glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom. Ethiopia and Zebra in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honoured and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Here ends the first reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 28th verse. Glory be to thee. 
Jesus said, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword, which is bad enough. But then there's the stuff about, I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and so on and so on. It sounds an awful lot like the Moonies or the Scientologists, rather than Christianity. We're the ones who go on about the importance of families, which is why we're so appalled when we hear of cults breaking them up by forcing people to choose where their loyalty lies. But Jesus seems to be saying the same sort of thing. So how do we deal with it? There seem to be just three possibilities. One is to say that the passage doesn't mean what it appears to me because Jesus would never have demanded such things of his disciples. Perhaps there's been a mishearing or mistranslation and what he's saying is that following him is going to be very demanding. The second response is to say that the passage does actually mean exactly what it appears to mean and that such sacrifices are a necessary part of being a genuine disciple. In fact, the demands made are so extreme and the life of discipleship is so hard and so odd that it will only be of interest and indeed only possible for a very small select bunch. The third response is to say that although the passage means exactly what it appears to mean, we're not going to take it to such extremes. Instead, we're going to read it in a way which allows the voice of Jesus to speak to us, whilst at the same time enabling us to remain part of the everyday world and to remain in communion with our families, in fact. Such a conscious reinterpretation is, of course, open to the criticism that it waters down Jesus' teaching. But it also means that his teaching becomes available to far more people. Because the brute fact is that most of us simply do not regard ourselves as second-class Christians if we have families that we're very fond of, or if we are world-affirming rather than world-denying. Which of these three is closest to the way that we understand the passage? Whatever else it is, religion is obviously involved in the truth business and is being dishonest if we try and pretend that difficult, even offensive passages such as this simply don't exist. But if we interpret them to make them fit in with our moral code, we need to acknowledge that that's what we're doing and accept that interpretation and the application of intelligence is part and parcel of being a thinking Christian. And that despite the way many people think about us, being a thinking Christian isn't some sort of contradiction in terms. Amen. I 
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. given in human hands of name, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through the goodness of this wine to us, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Mighty never living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all of them. We humbly beseech the most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty. Beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and to all those who put in authority under her. They may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. 
grace our Heavenly Father to Martin, our Bishop, and William and Ruth, his suffragans, and to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And for thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly so with thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow the good examples that with St. Mary the Virgin, St. George, and all the saints, we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Upon this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that you truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy way. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy, hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn out to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. words our Saviour Christ said unto all that truly turn to you. Come unto me all that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and abound in duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father,
Father God, by tender mercy, did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, and most humbly beseech thee. And grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. On the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed. Serve your bodies and souls unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Lord and Heavenly Father, we love our sons entirely to our thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.